Society is collapsing and men don't care. Society is collapsing and men don't care. Things are going downhill and crap is quickly hitting the fan. Watch it in the video to fully understand the serious implications of this and how this is going to affect all of us going forward. Today's video is brought to us by the Snyder Report. His channel will be linked in the description. And now let's just go ahead and jump right into the video. Unfortunately, nobody is ready for what is coming. And I know this because I talk to many people every single day. I get hundreds and hundreds of comments from you guys here on this channel. I get emails and I read reports. And I can tell you, the American people are not ready for what we are about to face together. So today I wanna to break down what is happening, what report just came out today, but what official report is coming out tomorrow. That is going to dictate the path forward. Again, this is troubling because the majority of Americans have no idea what is coming or how to get through it. So again, I'm gonna break this down in just a moment, but all I ask is one thing, it takes two seconds, go ahead, hit that like button if you enjoy these daily updates, and now let's begin. So we have a few problems. The first problem is jobs. The second problem is inflation. The third problem is savings. But look at the report that came out today. It says, August private payrolls rose by 99,000, the smallest gain since 2021 and far below estimates. Okay, this is the smallest gain we have seen since 2021. The good news is we are still adding more jobs every single month, but the concern is that these job numbers have been, well, pretty much falsified. They've been fake. They've been too high. We exaggerate the numbers every single month. And we learned just last month that the U.S. exaggerated numbers by over 800,000 for last year. So this number coming in saying it's we uh, increased our private payrolls by 99,000. Well, that's great. But when you factor in an adjustment, there's a good chance this is gonna be closer to 30 to 40,000. So again, not a lot of jobs. But this is the reason why this is such a big deal because of this. It says employment could spark a 50 basis point cut and a panic move by the Federal Reserve. We know on September 17th and 18th, there's an FOMC meeting. This is when the Federal Reserve is going to decide how much or if they're going to cut our interest rates. Right now, many people are expecting a 25 basis point rate cut. But if we see unemployment right, tick up, if we see people are not getting hired on by many people, uh, we're seeing wages drop, all these things happen. The, the bad news is, well, we're out of jobs. The good news, we, that could actually push the Federal Reserve to cut rates quicker. The problem there is experts say it's going to cause additional inflation. But I wanna read you a few things, okay? From this article from CNBC, I wanna read you the key points really quick. It says, companies hired just 99,000 workers last month, less than the downwardly revised 111,000 jobs in July and below the consensus forecast of 140,000, uh, according to the, the payroll processing firm ADP for this month. Now, it says the, re the report corroborates multiple data points recently that showed hiring has slowed considerably from its blistering pace following the COVID outbreak in early 2020. Here's what happened. And again, I bring this to your attention because many people don't realize what happened over the past few years. What happened is companies grew so quickly, we had a boatload of stimulus, people were saving money, we we're using credit cards because interest rates were just being cut, right? Everything was just so cheap. We we're buying homes because again, why not when we have a two to 3% interest rate on a 30 year fixed rate loan? Or we're buying cars because again, auto loans, so cheap. Now, what happened over that time was we just kept spending and spending and spending Businesses were growing, everything, everybody was booming, the US was doing great. But eventually we stopped buying homes because we just bought one. We don't need to buy a new home every year. We just bought a car, so we don't need a new one. We don't need to buy a car every year. We just bought new furniture, 
So why go get new furniture one to two years later when we still have pretty much brand new furniture? That's the issue. Now people aren't spending. Now we don't even have money saved. Look at this. It says personal savings rate uh, dips amid strong consumer spending. The US, our the consumers are not spending money or not saving money. We're spending it, which is part of the problem. And this is what nobody's ready for. How much money do you have in savings? Let me just ask you this and just, just think about it. You don't have to write it. You don't have to comment. Just think about how much money you have in savings. If you have six months to, let's say a year of an emergency fund. So let's say you, you uh, spend $4,000 a month on all your expenses, $4,000 a month. So for six months, you would need $24,000. So you need an emergency fund between 24 and $48,000 in savings in your emergency fund, just to make sure you're good. Here's the problem. The majority of Americans cannot afford a $1,000 emergency fund. <laughs> Nonetheless, a $48,000 emergency fund. But this is why I'm bringing this to your attention today. Look at this chart right here. Okay. Look at this. So right here, this big line is going up. This is when we're in the recession. This is the pandemic. This is the start right here. Okay. You can see where we're at today at 2.9%. That, that's, that's pretty low. That, but again, we've been lower than that over here. Okay. In 2022, we were much lower than that. But this is the amount of money we we're saving. If we go back to 2019 over here, look at this. Okay. We're up here at what, like 6%. We're averaging probably 6% over here savings. Now we're at half of that, at 2.9. So we're saving half of the money that we once did after the pandemic. Do you see a problem there? Because now we're dealing with inflation. We're dealing with the potential recession. I talked about this just the other day. And I told you guys that the American people should be scared. Now, again, I'm not saying this just to, to make sure that you are scared, because again, what am I going to gain out of you being scared? Guys, people should be frightened and petrified. When I see idiots in the comments saying that people don't need to worry, everything's going to be fine, the, the, the greenback will be okay, you can tell these people are literally on extreme levels of copium or they have the Jezebel spirit within them and they are trying to disillusion people. You understand that the Jezebel spirit is a spirit that does not just only inhibit women, it inhibits men. It is an evil, wicked spirit, the evil spirit that inhibited Queen Jezebel, and it passes down and, and lives on today. You can see that in society. So a lot of these people who are basically trying to say that everything is okay, these people are on copium. If you want to be one of these people, go ahead. Be a fool. What, look at all that we have passed through over the last 20 years. Some of you are a lot younger than I am. In my 40, I'm in my 40s now. But I will say this, all right, you know, there are a lot of Gen Xers that know better. They know better. They know that hard times always come because they've, they've lived lives of hard times. And there's a lot of them that are basically like, well, yeah, stick a fork in me. I'm done. It doesn't. Let me tell you something. Debt doesn't come easy. All right. It doesn't come like that. You will suffer and suffer and suffer. Before, for a lot of you will suffer before those final days come to you. Okay. Because if you think that you're just going to pass away and that's the end of it, you're going to throw up your hands and you're going to get an easy way out. No, nah, buddy, it doesn't work like that. There is a lot of suffering you'll go through before you finally get to that point. And trust me, when you are going, you know, the actual moment, the actual time, once it's over, it's over, supposedly. But actually getting there, the, the pain and suffering that it'll take before you get to that point and the time that you will spend suffering throughout that down decline until the very end of your existence now that that in and of itself is hell this is one of the reasons why it is better to die rich than it is to die poor trust me on that and for those of you that are basically acting like you know there's nothing you can do about it well guess what too bad for you because life has never been easy for anyone. The, the, the boomers, they had the best economy. They had the best lives, most of them. They had, they, they, you know, I'm not saying that every boomer had a golden spoon in their mouth, but they had so much opportunity that many of them were just living off the economy. They were living off good times. They were living off their parents. When their parents passed away, even before their parents passed away, they were receiving money. The, the vast majority of us, we have nothing. Our parents gave us nothing. Everything has literally been 
We've had to manifest it ourselves. And to make it even matters even worse, there are a lot of boomers who are turning around and now telling us that we owe them something and that we should be taking care of them into old age. As if this is like, this is some kind of psychotic crap. They give us hard childhoods, hard lives, and then they expect us to give them, give them nice retirement packages for it. I, I saw this comment from this idiot Gen Xer who's going after Gen X, and now he's coming after me because I'm constantly saying, leave Gen X alone. And there are, there are, there are idiots among the generation who want to come and bring this toxic energy, blaming, blaming every single one of us for Gen Z, like we're the ones responsible for these idiot kids. All right, check this out. This is from Tom Price. He says, Generation X here, we failed. When you look at the young people today and how soft and weak they are, don't pat yourself on the back for being tougher than them. Instead, ask yourself who raised these kids, who raised these young kids. It was us. We were the parents, the teachers, the generation responsible for making sure the kids turned out all right, and we failed. Our parents didn't fail us, but we certainly failed when it came when it became our turn. So my response to this idiot was, and we failed them by by uh, by wait for it not doing enough for them, not validating their emotions enough, not ensuring that they had everything they needed to succeed, not being there for them. The boomers were not good parents, all right? This idiot's like, our parents didn't fail us. They absolutely did. The boomers were not good parents. We simply had to grow up much faster because they were such bad parents. We gave Gen Z everything that they, we gave, we gave, we gave Gen Z everything and they took it all and then threw it back in our faces just like the boomers did with their parents. I'm beyond disgusted with this comment. It's people like you that enable Gen Z. The boomers have controlled society, the education system, and everything for the last 50 to 60 years at this point. We'll probably never have a Gen X president, and you're blaming us. So then the idiot continues on. We failed them by doing too much for them by validating their emotions too much, and yes, by ensuring they had everything. And I agree with this. We did. We gave them way too much. We raised them to be soft. We gave them too much. I agree with this. And it doesn't matter that we, that we have never had a Gen X president because presidents don't raise kids. Parents do. And we were the parents. If this comment disgusts you, it's because it hits home. You know I'm right, but I understand you can't concede that. Your little ego will, won't allow it. Besides, you'll get far more views by continuing to pander to Generation X and trying to pass our failures on to, off onto someone else. Let me make this clear. I agree with this guy about everything he said that we gave, we gave Gen Z way too much. A large portion of the problem with Gen Z, just to be clear, is social media, that they grew up with social media. And it, and it completely misconstrued the way that they see things and value things. But overall, they got way too much. They got way too much. Their feelings were way too validated. They got too much. And I agree to this. I agree. But the clear, but honest, let's let's make this very clear. Gen X overcompensated too much, but to blame Gen X for all of the social ills is ridiculous. Gen X did not create the education system. Nor did Gen X continue to guide the education system. This is Gen this is the boomers. The boomers are still firmly in control of the education system. They're the ones making all of the decisions. Who are the ones pulling the strings in Washington? Who are the most pe powerful people in Washington right now? The boomers. They're the ones who hold. They're the ones in charge of the House and the Senate. And firmly in charge. And as soon as one of them leaves, another one just takes their place. The boomers vote in unison. They vote like a shield. All right? Okay? And they're the ones who are continuing to vote for these policies. It's it's ridiculous. How, what, what the hell are we supposed to do? I don't know what these people expect. What was Gen X supposed to do? You see, you see, you you can see what happened to all those January six people. Many of them are now in prison. I don't know what the hell these people think. Okay, like they really need to leave me alone. Leave me alone, okay? Because I'm not responsible for this. They want to act and blame everyone else for the failures of society. What about personal? What about personal responsibility? Because I don't comprehend. 
how it, how is it that I that everything in my life I'm punished for everything I've done and everything I haven't done? I've had to guys. We didn't get as Gen X. We didn't get what we were. We didn't get what we were promised. People born in the Gen X era, we did not get what we were promised. I had someone who sent me an email. And they said, angry, I don't understand how you ended up homeless once. You, I mean, you're so different compared to most of the other guys in the manosphere. Like, you know, you're highly educated. Not to say there's not highly educated people, but you're highly, high, highly educated. You're very entrepreneurial. You know, you, your channel is a six-figure business that you built. This You built this channel in a year, and it's six-figure. So I don't understand how is it that you could have ended, ended up homeless. And it was a very good question. Here's what happened. I started building, and that was a very good, I started building businesses back in 2001. And I did this for years. And I came across a lot of angel investors. A lot of the time, a lot of my, my, my late teens and early 20s, I was just basically grinding. I was grinding. I was working hard. I was building companies. I was doing this stuff. But this was when the tech, this is when the internet first came about. And the technology was still very, very new. And I was doing advanced things that no one, no one else knew how to do. But here's the thing. I didn't have a playbook. I didn't have a teacher. I didn't have anyone who taught me how to do business. We didn't have the internet the way that we have today with all of these resources to teach you how to start a business. What's an LLC? You know, how to use tax, the tax system to offset, to offset liabilities. And we didn't have any of that. Okay. And we didn't have met, we did not have, proper mentors because the boomers were in place and the boomers didn't know what the hell they were doing. The boomers were shysty. They weren't going to teach us how to, how to, how to start a business. The only thing that they were telling us was to go to school and get these degrees and that we're going to live these very easy and comfortable lives. And you know what? After, you know, about five, after about five years of running a business and working hard and grinding, I said, you know, I, and I, I should never have done this, but I was like, ah, screw it. You know what? I'm just going to go and get this expensive degree from one of the top universities in the United States. And they're telling me that, oh, I'm going to make all of this money. The starting salary is going to be minimum starting salary is like 55000 But people like us with these degrees, you know, you go to Ivy League, you get one of these degrees, Ivy League, Ivy League school edu degrees, you're going to walk into a job and get like 75K to 100 realistically, wink, wink. I'm telling you. So I'm thinking to myself, okay, so you know what? I'm here busting my butt, working hard as a business owner, and I can just go and get one of these one of these degrees. And you know, it's you know, I'm gonna have to work hard. I'm gonna have to put in a lot of work. My undergraduate is a business degree from one of the top universities in the in the world, not in the United States. I have a degree, I have a business degree from one of the top universities, business schools in the world. In the world, not the US, in the world. And guess what? When after I went to, I, you know, I, I basically shut my business down, said that I'm going to go and get this degree, grinded really, really hard, suffered like hell, suffered and used all of my disposable income that I had used running my business to cover the cost of this education. And what ended up happening? Well, well, we entered into the Great Recession, and we were told that, oh, this is a once-in-a-lifetime thing that 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 um that will never happen again. We'll never have a hard, we'll never have a, a hard economic period like this ever again. And that Great Recession lasted. That lasted for many, many years. It went from like oh seven or late oh seven all the way into the twenty tens, and. You had people like with graduating from law school being offered minimum wage and being told that if you have experience, that's a plus. Law school. Like that's what was happening during the Great Recession. This is the reason why when crap hits the fan, again, guys, everything is gonna be on sale. Like there's no cover, there's no recovery from this. People are living off credit right now. Everyone is living off credit right now. Right? So you know, I went to business school, got this degree, graduated into, into one of the worst economies ever during the Great Recession, did a lot of crap jobs, worked at a call center, then got an offer to work at a company where, you know, a very good company, but the, the pay was garbage, absolute garbage. They totally screwed us over. 
And one of the things that I didn't know is how to negotiate a salary properly. And even if I had negotiated, the salary that they offered me was so low compared to what I was supposed to be receiving. So for the job that I was doing, the job that I got hired to do, that kind of job, you would start off a salary at at probably maybe ninety to hundred thousand dollars. That's an extremely difficult job. I was working in insurance. It was a job where you had to be trained for one year to just to do the job. You had to take exams. I'm serious. We had to. We were literally in a classroom, and we had to. And we had to go through. We had to take these exams. Tons of and math. Just before I even got the job, they sent me a math exam. Like, I'm just telling you, like, this is how crazy this job was. Before I could even go for the interview, they sent me a math exam, and I had to do a math exam online to show that I can, I, you know, I could do, print, I can demonstrate principles of accounting, um, you know, solve equations, use critical thinking. Like, I'm, I'm so serious. Like, this actually happened. And thank God, I was so confident at that point in my life where I felt like I was a person of value that I aced the exam. But then after we got, after I got the job, I spent a year in training, and they, they told us, like, you're going to need about a year before you even feel comfortable doing this job. And we spent about a year in, a, in actual classrooms being given, like, give, given exams, and we had to pass these exams before we could even touch these jobs just to make not even $15 an hour and work. And then we were working crazy hours and extremely hard work. And the idea was, okay, well, you're just starting off, but and everyone else around me, like all the boomers, all the evil boomers, they were all making tons of money, a hundred K massive amounts of money. And, but when, but when we entered into the job market, they had cut salaries and basically everyone was so desperate that we took whatever we could get. So now we're, we're working in positions where you're supposed to be making like a hundred thousand dollars a year and they're giving us 30,000, but telling us that like, you know, you're going to earn it. They are so full of crap after being in that job for like a couple of years, they offered, you know, they were giving us like 10 cent raises. Oh my God. And people were leaving, and they came up with all kinds of bull crap. They're all, we're going to be hiring a bunch of new people. Because, they, because guys, they basically drain the life out of you. They drain the life out of you. And they start telling you they're going to be hiring a bunch of new people to bring help because you're completely swamped. And that never happens. So people start dropping like flies. People start quitting. And eventually, and what ended up happening was, with me, I was at the same time I was working on a PhD because I'm so ambitious. And, and then I'm also out there in the evenings, like with a little free time I have trying to go to the gym and also trying to sarge and go talk to girls. It was absolutely horrible for me. It was one of the worst periods of my life. And there was a lot of people, a lot of people passed away around that time. You know, family passed away. I thought the world was ending for me. Fast forward. Yeah, right. And. And then, then come, uh, what was it? And then, I mean, it doesn't end there. Come 20, what year was it? Come 20, you know, so, so yeah, so now we're into the 2010s. And I'm like, yeah, I can't do this job anymore. So I basically save up whatever money I can. I cash out my 401k, take the penalty. And I'm like, okay, I'm going to go back to school. I'm just going to focus on my education again and try to switch fields. So I'm working on, so I'm working on my, uh, working on a, on a master's and, and I'm planning to go do other things and go into medicine. And then I basically run out of money, right? Because I'm looking for another job at the same time while going to school. I'm going to school full time and I'm trying to look, look for a full time job. And eventually I just crash and burn. And I couldn't, my body couldn't handle it anymore. I could not handle doing all of these things. And I ended up homeless. And the thing is, I was so far along in my education that I had already finished all of the classes. I had done everything I needed to do and the money was paid, but now they're like, okay, yeah, you're going to have to write a dissertation and you're going to have to write a thesis. But it was, it was basically, the, it was over a hundred pages. It was well over. And so it was a book. It was, it was a large, it was insane. And it had to be perfect and it had to be published in like the library of Congress. And it was a ton of total BS. It was so much, it was such hard work. And I ended up having to do this while sleeping on the street. 
Okay. And so, and then you're like, okay, so maybe this is going to get me that exped that, that, that really great job. Nope. If I learned my lesson after that, and I said, and I, I rebuilt from there, I basically re rebuilt my business and I, am and I've never worked for anyone else since then. And it was over 10 years ago. I have not worked. I've been on YouTube for over 10 years and I have never worked for anyone in 10 years and the education that I developed, I have two undergrad, I have two postgraduate degrees. So I have my undergraduate degree from a top business from a, one of the top business universities in the world. And I have two postgraduate degrees, uh, two master's degrees. And I also, have, you know, and I also have my, um, my experience working in, uh, working, um, working towards a PhD and a, and a doctorate. So, cause I just, just never finished them, but that's my experience. So I have, I take that experience. I take that knowledge. And also, I have a background in. A, I also have a background in technology. So I, uh, I, you know, I studied. I also studied um, computer science in university. In addition to my uh, my undergraduate in business, I also studied computer science in university. So I am a so you know I, I am a programmer. I'm a web developer. You know, I'm a technologist. I have a lot of experience in cryptocurrency, cryptocurrency development. I've developed cryptocurrencies. You know, so that's I've taken all of that knowledge and I've been able to use that knowledge to build my business, build my brand and the, and the wisdom I've gained over time. But just to be very, very clear. It wasn't easy and I had to do all of this on my own and I share the wisdom and I pass a lot of this on. And a lot of people don't value it. They do not value the knowledge. They think life is supposed to be easy. Your life is going to hand itself, hand something to you. It's, I, I tell you guys, so many people are like, you can see the, the wickedness upon so many people, but they have the Jezebel spirit within them. And that's the reason why during these wicked, these hard and evil times, you have to just turn to Jesus and, and believe in Jesus because this is a wicked world and an evil world. And Gen Zers and the boomers are wicked and evil people. And even among Gen X, there's a lot of these evil people like the one I just showed you who are who basically want to blame us for something that we did not do. All right. And put and put things upon us. Like some of us don't even have kids. I don't have any kids, but I'm still blame, being blamed for Gen Z. Like, what the hell? I didn't like, like, like seriously. I didn't raise them. Yeah, well, your generation. Get the hell out of here, bro. Get the hell out of here. Okay. Gen Z is the way that they are because Gen Z chose that life. They are about that life. Okay, so they can live with it and they can deal with the consequences of what they've done. All right. When they end up homeless and hungry on the street in the streets, that's not my problem. All right. When they decide that they're going to start pillaging and pillaging and going crazy. All right. And law enforcement responds to them with force. That's not my problem. I don't care what happens to these people. I just like I don't care what happens to the boomers. I could care less about what happens to Gen Z. I've learned to focus on myself and and, you know, I'll take care of those who take care of me. But beyond that, I just don't give a damn. And I, that's how most men are right now. Most men don't care. And I could care less what some little simp has to say in my comments. These simps are Jezebels. These simps have the Jezebel spirit within them. All right. A lot of them are going to end up homeless. Let me tell you right now, the, these dudes who are out there chasing after tail. Instead of developing themselves, these dudes who turned on men. These men are good guys. These men are going to end up home. These, these men are not going to survive. They don't have survival value. They don't have skill sets. They don't have that mindset. Okay. They're still out here chasing. Even in, yeah, I had this one idiot like, oh, you men don't want to be, you have relationships with women in, in, in Western society when there are so many wonderful women. Nah, you guys are like losers. Really, bro? Okay, cool. No one's, no, listen to me. No one's taking them from you. Go and go, go and live your best life. But you're gonna be you're gonna be one of the dudes that are hungry and homeless. You people don't understand just how bad it's going to get when you can't afford food anymore. Where am I headed right now, guys? I'm 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 in the process of working towards building a ranch. But you know, getting my land together, building a nice ranch. I'm putting a nice ranch on that on that land, having animals on that land, having farmland so I can grow things. I'm not playing around with any of you. All right, having a bunch of acres. Okay, old farmer angry. You better not step foot on my land. 
And you know what's nasty is there's some of you who are listening to these videos right now, and you're salivating over the idea that when if things hit the if crap hits the fan, you'll come try to find me and rob and steal from me. Because you're not getting what you this is exactly how you know this is to talk about ego, talk about evil. I'm preparing, I'm working hard, I'm grinding. Guys, you see how hard I work on this channel. I go to sleep. And then I go to sleep, I finish working, and I go to sleep. I wake up, and I start working. That's my entire life. And it's not just on this channel. I'm will, I'm building up multiple businesses. This channel is just used to grow my other businesses, to grow my business, my core business, all right? That's what the purpose is. So that's how I operate, so that I will always have a stream of income, and I will have a nice, large nest egg that is continuously growing so that I can weather any storm that comes. Learning how to survive on very little money. So basically, I can have a million dollars in the bank, but survive on 10000 and near to nothing at all and live well and thrive on that. And they're idiots like you need to go and spend some money. Get the hell out of here, bro. I'm not wasting any money. That's not how, that's not how the wealthy lives, okay? There's a difference between being rich, simply being rich, and being wealthy. The wealthy don't throw away money like you, like 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 these people. Sha Shaquille O'Neal, he went from being rich to being wealthy. He talked about how he lost so much money very quickly, and then he went and I think got like a bachelor, a master's in finance afterwards, and he learned what where money goes and how money works. And now he's worth hundreds of millions of dollars, and he doesn't play that he doesn't play that nonsense anymore. He's a generous person. But he's a very different person than he was when he was young. He doesn't play games with money anymore. He doesn't hand his kids money anymore. If his kids want money, they're going to have to go learn, build a business model, and come to him and present that business model to him and show them how he's going to be investing in their business. That's that and that's that's a lot. Being able to do that before in front of your father, that's a luxury. And he's not spoiling his kids. His kids have a roof over their heads. They have food to eat. They have the things that they need, and they are equipped for survival. But he's not giving them handouts. And he's not giving them millions of dollars and putting them and, and giving them these easy lives. Like, you know, he's, he's it's a good balance. It's not abusive. For example, you know, he says that his kids, they always need to come home. His kids always have to come home to him. He doesn't want them getting into arguments with cops. It doesn't matter what they said. They need to bring their butts home and let him deal with it afterwards. So he's not, he hasn't thrown his kids out on the streets like the boomers did. They threw us out onto the streets. They threw us out. He hasn't done that. He hasn't done what the boomers have done. But he's made it very clear that he's not going to give them, you know, luxury and handouts like Gen Z, you know, and all of this garbage. No, they're going to have to actually create value for themselves and they're not touching his money. That's how he's operated. And I really respect it. I really, really respect that, you know. There's no accountability when it comes to Gen Z or the, the boomers. It's amazing how I'm supposed to be held accountable. Guys, do you see how stupid this is? Do you see how stupid? Like, everyone wants to hold Gen X accountable for what society has. Gen X, who has been minding their damn business for the last 30, 40 years. You want to come and mess with X? All right? I don't know. I'm telling you, I'm sick of this. Sick of this corrupt society and these and, and and the good for nothing children of these of these bad apples. You know the boomers, bad bad apples. Guys, the, the future of this is just basically a lot of people homeless and hungry. Society collapse. I said this before that society won't collapse. Groups of people in society will collapse. That's how it's gonna go. Guys, if you're enjoying the content, you um, if you enjoy the content. You know, enjoy the video, then subscribe to the Angry Guy Clubhouse on Substacks. You know, it's you can dive into our podcast, your next stories, articles, tons of great stuff. And also you get access to our free digital nomad blueprint. You can click the link in the description to go ahead and get started and to join. It's really awesome over there. Come and connect with us. It's so chill. What do you guys think regarding all of this? Society is collapsing and men don't care. Let me know your thoughts. We'll talk about it in the comments. Like the video if you like it. Don't forget to subscribe. And if you like the video, share the video. And just remember that all roads lead to MWM and walking away and cheers.